and we're live now okay mike so guys i'm here today with mike vogel like i said i mentioned before one of the toughest blue bell that i have met yeah uh, yes for real i'm not joking like because like uh when i first met you like i'm a six four guy right <laughs> and, and, big man <laughs> yeah and how tall are you five nine five nine but man like uh I thought, man, for being a five guy against a six, man, it was, was tough. Very tough. The first time, you know, like it was very aggressive. And, man, it was awesome. I don't know where you got that from, but it was a good first, first impression that I had, right? Well, it, 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 uh, it's been amazing getting to train under you and, and train under Professor Brian Cooley. And, and it seems like everyone, everyone at the schools is a giant. So <laughs> it only helps to make me better. Yeah, it was a coincidence, right? When you walk in, everybody, man, everybody's huge here, but it's nothing to do with jiu-jitsu because that's actually the other way around, right? Right. I think I think from my point of view, is like the smaller you are, the better. I people, agree with that. Some people don't agree. No, I don't agree with you as well, man. Just to let you know, you see how long my arms are for you to attack and, and get my arms and you know how long my torso is. It's so much easier than somebody like the... The, the crunch, you know, like armadillo, it's very hard. Yeah. But anyway, yes. <clears throat> so, Mike, thank you very much for coming like today here, Sunday. It's almost like a holiday. Actually, Memorial Day weekend, right, today. And you're just here spending some time with us. I hope I can ask you some nice questions that I have here with me. And if you have same something. Here. Same, same here. here. All right. Yeah. Um, so let's start, okay? Let's do it. I don't want to just open here my file. So my question is that it, it doesn't have like a sequence, okay? So it's gonna I'm gonna talk about jujitsu. I'm gonna talk your career. I'm gonna talk about the family and go back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you think are some common misconceptions about start? training jiu-jitsu <clears throat> well i think the 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 misconceptions that people have is, you know i'm not in shape i'm not i'm not in shape enough or i'm not strong enough or i'm too old or i'm too young or uh the, the i think the beauty of jiu-jitsu as I found when I started was it doesn't matter where you are on your on sort on your your journey of things um, you can kind of go at your own pace and that's a that's a sometimes that's a tough lesson to learn as as you've seen when when most white belts start out we go crazy we go nuts and you're just trying not to die um, and I think that one of the first things that struck me about uh, the first time you and I ever got to roll together was how slow and methodical and calm you were in 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 how you how you moved and how you did it. And it was a a, a, a quick learning thing for me of wait a minute, this guy's not he's not trying to destroy me as quick as he can, and yet in two seconds I'm tapped out just moving slowly and calmly. And so I think you get people from all different sizes, all different walks of life and all different fitness levels coming into jujitsu and you push yourself at your own pace. Mm -hmm. I agree with you a hundred percent. It's awesome. This talking that I'm having, you know, with uh, all kinds of like, uh, people and athletes and non athletes and, uh, and everybody has a kind of the same vision, you know, and mm -hmm. it's really amazing. It does hear from somebody that's pretty much new into jujitsu, right? Because you have been training for how long, actually? Uh, it's been uh, it's been two years. Two years, right? But for jujitsu, that's nothing. Two years is just a just a baby, just yeah. starting there, right? But it's, yeah. it's, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Here, what what you saying there? Like uh, that you you realize that 
right away that, man, what's going on? Why is not trying to kill me, right? And, and actually, the truth behind that is it's because I need to survive, right? I can't. Right. What if I fail when I try to kill you, right? What if I don't kill you in three <laughs> seconds? It's, man, then I can't last any longer. So I have to think twice and be methodic, you know, to make sure my plan is going to work. Right. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, okay. Now for you. Yeah. So, being being Brazilian, was there an expectation on you to do jujitsu, or is it something that you just that you just took to on your own? Yes, not at all. No expectations at all. Actually, like uh, I, I didn't have a chance to train jujitsu until I got older. Like, I didn't have any contact with jiu-jitsu friends until I got older. So, no, no expectations, expectations. Actually, like, my mother, she just found out that I was, like, a training jiu-jitsu when she saw me on a newspaper. <laughs> she saw a news talking about me with a big photo of mine that I won a competition in Brazil. And then she, oh, it looks like you're very good at this thing, right? <laughs> so, but she had no idea my parents so answer your question there's no expectation and no no Brazilians I, I don't know these days right because I moved here like 10 years ago and I mm -hmm. bet in 10 years lots of things have changed in Brazil back there actually I just I, I went there like last December for just a few mm -hmm. days and man, it was a huge change and just talking about the streets the roads constructions and the mentality of the people too that changed especially with the UFC now having fights every weekend that yeah turn jiu-jitsu into way more popular, even in Brazil. People, mm. think, people think that every Brazilian plays soccer and does jiu-jitsu, right? <laughs> no, Don't they? No. <laughs> I, I, actually, I played soccer. I tried to play soccer because we have two, because it's a very cheap sport. Like, uh, we don't have, like, a, a, a basketball court, basketball, uh, nothing to play with. So everybody plays football because it's cheap. You know, like mm -hmm. you can make a ball. We used to make a ball with our socks. We put a bunch of socks together and then we have a sock to play. Right. Because we, uh, some people, they can't afford to buy a, uh, actually a soccer ball. Yeah. Yeah. But I tried and it didn't work out for me. <laughs> soccer. But it's so a dream. You, you, you took to choking people out instead. Same, yeah. same. <laughs> yeah. But later on, later on, like later on, I play basketball. Um, okay. My turn. Uh, <clears throat> did you play sports growing up? I did. Uh, my my two my two sports were baseball and wrestling, and so for me, you know, re I, I always said, and, and this, you know, uh, you, you've had the my son had my son Gabe had the privilege of starting underneath of you as well. And uh, I've always said that because of my experience growing up with wrestling, that uh, my son, uh, especially my son, would either wrestle or do jujitsu because I think that they are two of the uh, son, daughter, doesn't matter. Um, it, it is one of the greatest things, I think, to instill discipline and self-control and confidence uh, in a child. And... Um, so, you know, I wrestled my whole life till I got out of got out of high school, and 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 then when I started jujitsu two years ago, I got so angry at myself for waiting so long to get back into it um, because it brought all of those all of those th those feelings and that adrenaline rush back. Um, but it was it was a hard transition. I think a lot of wrestlers they do well eventually in jiu-jitsu but there's a there's a learning curve because it's it's very different still from wrestling so you're i think you're comfortable with your body weight and your balance on top of people and so you can move around someone really quickly and you can get into to to tight spaces really quickly but uh like in wrestling if i'm on my back i'm about i'm about to lose and, and, and the match is almost over. So you're fighting to get off of your back and, and to, turn, to turn over. And in jiu-jitsu, 
that's like death because being on your back in jujitsu is a position of strength uh, and giving someone your back that's game over um, so it was a lot of learning to change my my uh, mindset on um, on how how they're the same and how they're different mm-hmm. but uh, yeah but uh, like uh, I love wrestling I mean I love all kind of sports I mean almost all kind of sports please don't get mad at me but it's because I don't understand but baseball I don't get it you know <laughs> <laughs> you hit the ball and run and then it, you catch the ball and you don't want the ball and you throw the ball back throw away from you it, it doesn't make sense but that's that's why I don't like it because I don't understand right get it <laughs> but the wrestling the, 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 the fighting aspect of it yeah. I love it I just love it too they, 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 like, actually because like I, I asked my son to do wrestling because he was very uh I mean, he was he was he, he was growing up watching me train jiu-jitsu, and I've always been like that calm, mm-hmm. slow paces and calm, no aggressivity, you know. But at some point, you have to be aggressive. Yeah. And my son, he wasn't. He wasn't. He said, man, you gotta go for it, you know. And as I said, man, you know what? Wrestling, I think, is gonna help him a lot. Mm. Yeah, man, when he went, he went to wrestling, it was a kind of click in his head, you know? He's like a beast, like, ah, yeah. to kill someone. You know, that's, that's awesome. <clears throat> right. All right. Your turn. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so what would you say is the difference between training jiu-jitsu in the U.S. and Brazil? Since, you know, since you've had the experience of both places. Mm-hmm. What would you say is the uh, difference? I can't say about now and about 20 years ago, right? But let's mm-hmm. say right now, there's no difference. There is no difference. What happened is uh, the jiu-jitsu is evolving, right? The class's mm-hmm. instructors, is, structure is getting better. It's getting becoming more professional. It's becoming more towards the students instead towards the fighter. Mm. So it's not just about it being U.S. or being Brazil. I think if I was be teaching in Brazil right now, if I went back to Brazil, I would be teaching the same class that I'm teaching right now. Yeah. The same format that we have, the same structure, the same curriculum. That would be the same thing because that that's proved to be the best. And it's, mm-hmm. it's working. But I would say, like, uh, of course, we have, like, uh, different people, different schools, right, with different goals as well. Yeah. And most of our uh, most of our students, most of the normal people, they don't want to become a world champ mm-hmm. unless they don't want to put the, the time in and work to become a world champ. They might say, "I want to be a world champ, but I just can't train twice a week." Is that okay? Mm. I say, "Yeah, it's okay, but be realistic, man. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. You want yeah. to be a world champ, you gotta train twice a day. You have to work on your strength, cardio, blah blah blah, diet." So that being said, I would say that in U.S. it's easier. Yes. In U.S. here it's much easier if someone comes and say, I'm going to be a world champ. He has a very higher chance than become a world champ than a Brazilian guy, <clears throat> per se, mm. right? Because mm. here we have a better chance to have more uh, uh, support. Over here it can work like a... a, a Like, not a full-time job, uh, just a few hours a day if you live with somebody else and then you can pay your school, you can buy supplements, you can train twice a day. In Brazil, that's not reality. You got to work 10 hours a day, you have family to feed, you have, it's not that easy. So, that I think, don't you think, don't you think that uh, when someone comes out of Brazil, they're hungrier? Oh, for sure. Because of the adversity they've had to face, oh. it produces uh, just a beast of a jiu-jitsu player. Yeah, but let's let's get out of that to a different aspect. I think every immigrant that comes to the, this country here, they, they come way hunger than, than people that live here already. Yeah. Because especially if they come to a, from a poor country. Right. Yeah. They want, they, I came here. I don't came here to to to, to play. I, I didn't come to your ass to have fun. I came here to succeed. 
mm-hmm. in business or sport, but that's why I came here. Because if I want to have a, like a mediocre life that I was having in my country, I would stay there with my family. Yeah. I don't want to move here and become a homeless. There is yeah. no way. So that's why it's way harder to find like a homeless immigrant here. Mm. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense unless they get addicted to drugs and stuff like that. But normally yeah. the mindset of somebody that moved out of his house to a different country, especially, is because they want to succeed and they're going to fight hard. It's not easy. Yeah. And then especially if it's, he's a fighter, right, that comes from a poor family, a poor neighborhood, and, and somebody give him a chance, listen, man, you're going to come this way. Man, guess what? It's kill or be killed. <laughs> There's yeah. no way. He's going to be way more disciplined, you know, to achieve his goals. That's yeah. what I think. <clears throat> okay. Uh, man, I had so many questions, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so many. That's not like this is too much, you know, or, or that's now. I don't know. But what? Uh, when did you realize you would be an actor? Okay, because watch, hold on, let me just say this, okay? Yeah. Uh, one of these days, uh, not one of these days, a few years ago, my son came to me and asked, Daddy, how come you don't have a job? Right? You just go to the school, teach jiu-jitsu, and you don't have a job, you don't work, right? <laughs> so, and my question right. was to you was be like, uh, do you have a job or you just act? <laughs> <laughs> right? So no, but, but the, I didn't rephrase the question. I remade the question. The question is, when did you realize, man, you, man, you know what? This is going to be my career. I'm going to leave out that, of this. But isn't that, isn't that the dream though? You know, the, the, the dream is to go to work, but not have it be a job. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like work. I grew up plumbing with my dad and it it that was hard work that was a job Mm -hmm. you you know every single day you know digging sewers and changing water heaters and 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 it's hard work but acting for me it's something that I you you would do it for free because you love it uh, and it's probably the same for you with jujitsu. Mm-hmm. You know, it ju- you're you're fortunate enough that you found a way to make a career out of what you love to do. Um, and uh, uh, you know, for me, it just happened really early, right out of uh, after my first year in college. Um, I had started started uh, modeling and started training in acting right before uh, 9-11 happened. And uh, right after that, got my first television show and then kept training, kept working, kept going. And, um, you know, thank God I've, I've been able to continue to feed my family and do what I love. And uh, and it gives me the freedom. It's it's one thing I love about about the, the, the Gracie Baja schools is, you know, before, before quarantine hit, we were up in Toronto uh, filming a new show up there and there's a Gracie Baja school there and you can just kind of jump in and go wherever you're at. There's a brotherhood, there's a school, there's a place that you can plug in and keep doing what you love. Um, uh, staying in shape, keeping your mind in shape. Um, and so, you know, all of those things, they just kind of fit together really well. But, uh, did you have a, uh, did you think about uh, when they grow up, I'm going to be an actor. Or no, just, not at all. Just, just not actor. at all. Somebody invite you to model, to become a model, yeah. and then somebody invite you to do a, a play, something. That That's how it happened? Yeah. I was going to go to the Air Force Academy and be a fighter pilot. That's all I ever wanted to do. Um, and uh, and I, But now what I didn't realize was growing up, I did a lot of like at um, – at church, I would do a lot of plays, and at school, would do a lot of uh, a lot of skits, and so I didn't realize. Growing up in, in outside of Philadelphia, it's just never in your mind that 
I think a lot of people that grow up in, you know, in the New York area, in the Los Angeles area, when you're surrounded by the arts and surrounded by the business of it, it's a little more it's a little more real that you go, oh, I, I could do this for a living. For me growing up, it was the furthest thing from something that I could do for a living. And um, uh, started started modeling and started started training up in New York with, with my acting my acting coach up there. And things just took off really quick. And that's when it when I realized, okay, it's time to get serious, work my butt off. Uh, and I had to learn that it, it's not about – it was never about becoming famous or any sort of notoriety. You had to fall in love with acting, which I did, and the work comes later. All, it, it, when, you follow, when you follow something because you love it, uh, everything else takes care of itself. But if you're chasing money or if you're chasing fame or you're, you know, you want to be a UFC fighter because you think Conor McGregor is cool or something like that, that's not the reason to do it. You get into it because you love the thrill. You love the game of it. You know, jujitsu, you love the, the challenge of, of playing chess at 100 miles an hour. Uh, that's why you do it. And when you work hard enough, the rest takes care of itself. I agree, a hundred percent. It's funny, like uh, one day I, uh, I was having a conversation with a friend, of, one friend of ours, <coughs> Wes, <laughs> and yes. I said, Wes, and I said, Wes, man, if you're good at acting, you should be a good liar, right? <laughs> Because acting is about lying. Right, man, he gave me like a big laugh. <laughs> like, no, it's not about lying, it's about man. He spoke like for 40 minutes. <laughs> Is it okay? You take it easy, all right? Okay, I got it. Okay, okay, <laughs> yes, right. yes. Um, do you ever get bored with it? What keeps you going? What keeps you, what keeps you going? You've done this now for, for a while. Um, <laughs> Does it ever get old to you, or, or does it, or does it always stay fresh? No, no. If I get bored, I get bored every single day. Yeah, you have no idea. Every single day, I get bored. But just like the phoenix, <laughs> and then I reborn next day when I wake up. That's right. I reborn because like uh, every day, especially when I train, teaching, teaching not as much, mm -hmm. right? Of course, teaching it helps too, but I think in training, it, it, that's what keeps me motivated. Because every time I train and I'm not able to apply something or I miss something or I lost something, I have to come back next day. Mm. I have to come back to try it again to make it better. And that's what keeps me moving. And not just, uh, I'm kind of guy that I like to learn about everything. I mean, there's, there's something that I like it, I'm going to try to become the best of it, mm. right? If I find something interesting, I want to know more about it. And I go, I go, man, I go deep. I research, I study, I try to become the best out of it. But as soon as I reach a level that I think I'm very good at it, I lost mm -hmm. interest. I lost interest. Uh, jiu jitsu could be the same thing, right? I could, man, I found interesting. I'm gonna learn this, and then when I reach a certain level, we say, you know what? I lost interest. In. But jiu jitsu, the, the thing is, I never reach that level. Every time I'm getting there, I come back down. Oh, I have to learn more. Mm. I come back down. That's what keeps me motivated to keep training. Right, right. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, there's one question here from Facebook and also is my same question. Uh, how did you find Jiu-Jitsu and how long it took you to actually start training? Um, it took me way too long to find Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I, 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 you know, I started, I started when I was, what, I, would have been 30, almost 38. Uh, when I started, um, I did some Krav Maga before that. Uh, and, and I think, again, I wish I had not, I had not waited so long, but I think what, what really hooked me was a lot of other 
fighting sports and martial arts that you take when you practice them and when you spar. Uh, and it was always the thing with Krav Maga that, that, I, that I didn't like is it's hard to spar at full speed. You know, you can only, you're not going to really eye gouge someone or, or, you know, break a joint or this, that, or the other thing. You can only train it so much. Whereas jujitsu, you're training at 100% every single time. And so your body gets used to that adrenaline dump. And, and if, you know, again, you always try and avoid an altercation. You always try and avoid in life, uh, uh, you know, I, I saw, um, uh, was it Henry Gracie or something speaking one time where he said, he said, Becoming uh, becoming a black belt has has helped me avoid more fights because you get humbled to the point where as you're walking down the street, you have no idea if that person walking past you on the sidewalk is a lethal, you know, fourth degree black belt uh, who can wrap you into a pretzel. And so you you always learn and, and strive to stay away from an altercation. But at least, you know. If it comes down to it, you spar at full speed every time. You know how your body's going to react. You know what that adrenaline dump feels like. Um, and so they always say, practice, you know, train like you fight. In jujitsu, you're training like you fight. Uh, and so for me, uh, it, it took me a long time to come to jujitsu, but I'm glad that I did. But how did you find it? How did you get into jujitsu? Uh, it was Wes, Wessie Poo, uh, was, uh, he, he had started training, uh, at Crohn's out in Los Angeles and Wes moved here to Tennessee for a second. And, uh, and, and he said, Hey man, I've got, I found this, this great gym up the road. Uh, you got to come. And so me and my buddy Phil, my buddy Chris and Wes, we all joined at the same time. And to this day, when we're healthy, <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're all in class together. So. Awesome. Awesome. Great group of guys. <clears throat> sure. So what, what is your favorite submission and why? Uh, chokes. Any kind of chokes. You do them quite well. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best. But uh, for lots of reasons, I guess, because I don't see myself um, being a strong guy to fight, like to pull somebody's arm, uh, like any kind of joint locks. And also like with a choke, you tap on that. Mm. Arms is sometimes some people let your arm get broken, they kept fighting. But when you choke someone, man, game's over is the best. Chokes yes. is any kind of chokes, especially from I mean any kind from the back, from the side, from the mouth, and also sometimes you have gravity helping you to squeeze even more the chokes. So when people say arm bars, kimuras, key locks, knee bars, toe holds, it's okay. But sometimes, man, if you, I, I know people that they don't tap. So like, a, yeah. for example, toe hold. I have a friend of mine that you can take his foot, he can spin around three times, he won't tap. <laughs> and that's in a competition, it's, it's, it's a gold or not gold. You can win or lose just because of that. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. I've I've never gone out, but I know I, uh, uh, Chris uh, Chris had the lights turned out on him one day, and he said it's the craziest thing, Mike. He said I I put my hand up to tap, and next thing I know, I was I was waking up off the mat, and <laughs> it happened it happened so fast. And what did so, you do? <laughs> yeah, I, he, he I, went, I, I have a good one for that. If yes. you choke somebody out next time, you let him sleep, you leave yes. the mats and turn the lights off <laughs> and sit on the bench. Let him wake up and... Just stare at him. <laughs> let him wake up. And, Whoa, what's going on? I, mean, I don't know, man. I just got here. <laughs> Class hasn't started yet. Yes. 
uh, it's funny because like uh, man I know like uh, uh, I don't know if you met Mina remember her very skinny yes. girl she put to sleep yeah. two big guys already training yep yep Two big guys because they didn't want to tap. They think, oh no, it's not gonna happen. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> Fall asleep. I mean, it's I, jokes are very powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> my turn. Um, I think it's my turn, right? Yes. And I'm getting older. I need glasses now. <laughs> uh, okay. I've seen, uh, uh, of course, like a uh, uh, few movies. And shows that you played, right? One of them was The Brave Man. I love that show. Mm. And I think a lot of people are on this with me. They really like the show The Brave. I don't know why they didn't go for the second season or they didn't move on. But it was a very great show. And uh, and I saw that, that you showed some military skills as well, right? Some military, yeah. like how to hold the gun, how to clear a space, how to walk in, you know? That, that's mm -hmm. really cool. That, that's one thing that amazed me, uh, that kept me watching a movie or just turn my back. You know, if I mm -hmm. see someone walking in a place like with the finger on the trigger, like the Joy yeah. Tribune in France, when he goes like the gun like this, like this, like this, it's oh man, come yeah. on, <laughs> that's not real. You know? I, I don't, yeah. I, I just turn it off and I change channels. I don't watch anymore. <laughs> But you, you guys did an awesome job, though. Uh, so, did you have any military experience, or you just had like somebody like coaching you, training you guys? Uh, how it works? Um, well, I, I've been fortunate enough over the years to train with a lot of just privately. Uh, I, I'm an avid shooter, and I enjoy I enjoy uh, tactical training and everything on my own. So I've done I've. I'd done a lot of that beforehand, um, but we were also uh, fortunate enough to train with um, uh, with a guy named Macal Vega, uh, former SEAL, uh, and um, also a a killer uh, jujitsu player in his own right. Um, and um, and to to actually to your earlier point. It was while we were shooting, while we were filming The Brave, we were doing a lot of combatives training and jujitsu training in our full gear, our full kit. Uh, and I, I, I said to Mikal while we were training, I said, when I get home, I've got to, I, I have to get into this. Um, and that's everything just kind of took off with Wes. And um, but yeah, to your point, I, it, it drives me crazy when actors don't they they kind of learn just enough to to kind of get on screen and walk around with a gun or whatever they're doing if mm -hmm. they're playing a sports figure the beauty of what we get to do is you get to become someone else for a time and so whatever that is you try and and jump in and fully immerse yourself and learn everything you can about it Uh, to portray that character to its fullest. So I think that's the fun of it to me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and also I think it shows a, a way more like a prof professionalism, right? Of someone that trying to be someone that, that like you're trying to become like a Navy SEAL, but you don't know how to hold a gun. Man, come yeah. on, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Yeah. Like, a, a, I'm, I'm, I'm watching sometimes I'm watching movies with my wife, and oh, this movie is nice, it's good. And then some, something happens, I stand up and I fall happened. No, I'm done. You see what he did right there? I mean, nobody does yeah. that, it's crazy. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the important thing is you don't want to pull someone out of the experience, you don't want, <clears throat> want to distract someone that, that's. That's part of what we do is creating uh, escapism to to you know to let someone sort of take a trip for for a couple hours to mm -hmm. to to imagine themselves as that person. And if you if you're not on your game and if you're just kind of phoning it in, you ruin that experience for whoever's watching. So yes. uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, to follow the last question, what is your favorite guard and why? Uh, that's easier. <clears throat> it's half guard <clears throat> because it's easier guard. <laughs> it's the easiest guard. 
mm-hmm. have guard, you don't have to be flexible, you don't have to be strong, you don't have to be nothing. Yeah. You just the, the one thing, the only thing bad about half guard is you cannot um, be sad getting smashed. Right. You got to get used to it getting smashed. Yeah. But once you get used to it getting smashed, which is not a big deal, you just turn your face and smash right here. It's not, it's not a big deal and smash right there. Isn't and like I said, it, I think everybody must play half guard. At least at least should know half guard because it's a very uh, way to like a, a transit to one guard to another. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like half guard, but man, if you find yourself here, it's better lock half guard than letting pass your guard. Yeah. And from there, get a way over to close guard again and then set up your guard again. Yeah. Don't don't try to skip it because later on it's gonna be your two go thing, especially yeah. when you get older. Yeah. When you have bad knees, especially because yeah. like the creator, creator, not, not the creator, like about the guy that uh, made half guard famous, right? He started playing half guard to hide his knee. Really? Yes, like uh, his name was Gordo, his nickname, right? And he hurt his knee once, and but he kept he didn't want to stop training. So instead of playing close guard, he would get his left knee and put on the ground and underneath him someone. So he would mm-hmm. protect his knee. So that's how he stopped playing more half guard. Yeah. But half guard is not something new. Like uh, somebody, I, 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 you, we can't say that he created the half guard. No, he was the one that started using more often half guard and became famous to playing half guard a lot. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, I would. I would have. Thought, I would have thought that you, being as being as as uh, as tall as you are, I remember the first time we rolled, you put me in in spider guard. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. stretched me out like a scarecrow. Uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I do, I do, I do play spider guard too. But most likely, I do play spider guard to set up the half. Okay, yeah. Because my both knees it hurts a lot. You have no idea, especially if someone yeah. is about my size, three hundred pounds, two hundred fifty. Man, it, it, it's very hard to control to maintain the grips right there. Yeah, but like I said. When you get older, you're going to see what I'm talking about, you know? Like, all your joints hurt. You're going to try to save energy. I see what you're talking about now. That's what scares me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Before, it's my question now, right? But before I ask, somebody is asking, Mike, which one of your works you like the most? Which one? Oh, which, which, what do I like the most that I've done? Um, Yes. Uh, I, I I don't really have one in particular because each, I mean, you could name any project and I'll give you, my face will light up because there's a different experience that I had on each project, um, uh, that I loved. Um, so it's hard, it's hard to pick one. I mean, if I had to, th- I, you know, the brave, I think was j- j- only because I, here we are Memorial Day weekend, and, and I ha- my whole life I've had such a respect for the men and women who have sacrificed so much in the military, um, and, and that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, so for me, that that one hurts the most because it, it with it not getting a chance to kind of go to a second season because I, I just I felt like it could have done. It could bring a lot of awareness and uh, notoriety to those that have uh, paid such a such a painful price. So, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not gonna say which one I like the most. I'm gonna say one that I don't like the most was that one yes. on Netflix. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one, it wasn't about you. It was about the movie, right? Uh, I forgot the name of, of it, but yeah, secret obsession. We all listen. We all have we, we all have uh, we all have uh, likes and dislikes, and sometimes a project turns out like you'd hope, and sometimes they don't. And but but again, you have a, an awesome time making them. Like you probably there'll be matches that you, you'll go to a tournament and you'll win a fight, you'll win a match. 
and then get mad at yourself because it didn't you didn't it yes you won but it didn't turn out like you wanted uh mm -hmm. it, you, you you were you were trying for a certain choke and you couldn't get it and 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 you ended up the guy made a mistake and gave you an arm bar instead and so you were able to capitalize on that but you get mad at yourself because that wasn't what you were trying to do yeah but also uh, but also mike why don't get me wrong i'm i'm saying like uh, as a spectator watching the movie right yeah you, yeah. you you made the movie you made my love it man that was awesome i did this right. part right here i had to work this way it was very hard for so for you it was an awesome job but just like for me it was I, I lost an hour and a half of my life watching that movie yes, yes. <laughs> it's it's a job right yeah. hey uh, uh it's gabe is still training jiu-jitsu your son yes yeah he? he is he loves it and uh and so we've been trying to stay with the whole quarantine thing and schools being closed down, we've been, we've been, uh, he and I mess around here. It's so funny. I, I think teaching children jujitsu as a parent is one of the hardest things because you spend your whole life telling them, okay, listen to me. You do not put your hands on your sister. You do not hit her. You do not punch her. You do not choke her. You do not kick her. You do not pinch her. You do not bite her. You do not do anything. And then you get on a mat and he'll be he'll be rolling with another another girl on the mat and he's just kind of looking at me like daddy what do i do you choke her you <laughs> and so it's the exact opposite of of what you're what you're teaching your kid but he's quickly learned you know this is the beauty of jiu-jitsu buddy is that the person will tap if it gets to be too much if it hurts too much or if 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 they're in danger that's why we have that's why you can tap. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's kind of learned now and I see him being really aggressive and, and, and a bit of a pit bull. So it's fun to watch. So that's, that's why one of the first thing that I do with like tiny champs, like three and four year old, one of the first drill that I do with them is like make facing each other, put the hands on the chest and push each other to see if you can push them as hard as you can to make him move out of balance. So they start creating like that kind of aggressivity and they see yes. that that's a game. They can do that on the mats because like yes. you said, that, that's very normal. Like a kid, they look at each other, look at their parents. What am I supposed to push him? I mean, is, right. that, is that okay if I do that, daddy? Is that okay? <laughs> you know? Yes. <clears throat> good point. Good point. Um, what position do you prefer to fight from? If you could choose any, any, you can find yourself in a, in a tournament, in a match. There's some people that love fighting from the guard. There's, of course, some people that, that would prefer side position or, or side control and, and, or, or to be, of course, always from the back. Uh, what, what, what is your preferred position? Uh, half God bottom. Okay. I half love God that. Half God bottom, half God bottom is like my lifesaver. Okay. I could be dying, losing 20 points, but if I'm on the ground and I put him inside my half guard, I'm oh, really I'm safe. Yes, I feel oh, I'm good because I know right now I'm just going to look at the timer, how, how much time I have left to sweep and submit you. Right? Yes. We're talking about competitions, right? Yes, yes. Competition. So, competition to be my back on the ground, half guard, looking at the timer. To see, because watch, if I have someone inside my half guard right in the beginning of the match, let's say a team in the match, mm -hmm. that means I, I can't, I have to sweep him right away. I can't stay there for 10 minutes. Yeah. And then guess what? I have to play top for nine minutes, which is way harder playing top. Mm. It requires more like a st stamina, strength, instead be on the on your on, on half guard on the bottom. It's much mm -hmm. easier, just relaxing. Yeah. So that's my comfort zone. Find myself yeah. there. If I lock your leg half guard, I feel, oh, good. Yeah, done, over. Yeah. I'm not yeah. I, I, that's what I think. It doesn't happen all the time, okay? It doesn't mean that uh, uh, I'm really going to win. It's just yeah. like for myself, in my head, it makes me calm down. Oh, I'm, I'm a safe zone right now. It's like putting like a lifesaver. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Now I can work something out out of this. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Uh, uh, I saw that you have a new movie. It's like the Fantasy Island. 
Yes, yeah, it came out in uh, uh, in February, right before right before quarantine. Yeah. But is that from the Fantasy Island from the the eighties? The show. So yeah, it's kind of uh, uh, Blum Jason Blum and Blumhouse did a um, a uh, sort of like a modern day twist on uh, on. There's a lot of throwbacks to the original uh, uh, tattoo and 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 the plane boss, the plane. So all the there's just little things that we worked in. But uh, of course, Jason Blum put his, his that spin that they put on it, where it's you know lots of uh, high energy entertainment. And uh, so yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> I love that show with tattoo and yeah. everything. We yeah. watched it back in Brazil, like uh, the airplane, the airplane, right? Awesome. I don't know if he would say that in English as well, but in Portuguese, he would go out running the airplane, the airplane. <laughs> and actually, you know, a funny story. Um, uh, one of the graces working that show. <clears throat> Is that right? Yes, he was the guy putting the that collar when people came out of the airplane. Get out of here! Yes, yes. Oh wow! He was okay. he was the founder of the UFC. <clears throat> oh, all right. All when right. he got here in the US, like he was teaching his garage, and somebody said, "Man, you look like uh, you could work as a like in the movies, but not the acting, like like just." How do you call those people that are acting but they're in the movies? How do you call them? Uh, like an extra or yeah, extra, extra. You can be an extra because you you can be a Latino, you can be Indian, right. you can be Hawaiian, you can be like this and that. So that's when he started making a lot of connections. Yeah, with Jiu Jitsu there, and then oh. it was like a, one of big steps in Jiu Jitsu here in the US. <clears throat> yeah, it's fun, right? <laughs> um, what what would you say is the biggest mistake for for anyone who's watching and they want to get into jujitsu? Uh, and of course, what your answer your answer will apply to anyone in any belt. But for a white belt starting out, what would you say is the biggest mistake that white belts make? Mm, you mean coming on the mat training? Uh, yeah. Um, Uh, I think w would be asking too much from themselves, mm -hmm. uh, not accepting the losing part of jiu-jitsu, which is the most important, the first thing you should learn when you start training jiu-jitsu is the losing. Yeah. I used to say, man, the losing, it's everything, <clears throat> right? When uh, we... we Everything is about losing. It's not about winning. You just, you just reinforce that. When you're born, you lose uh, your mom's belly, right? You lose that warm. You lose that food. Uh, and then you grow up. You lose your teeth. And then you lose your first girlfriend. girlfriend and then you lose <laughs> your first job. I mean, it's just about losing. And it's how you, we face that losing jiu-jitsu. It's, it's just reinforce that. Man, the first thing you should know right here is you're going to lose every single day. And then if you're not losing, it's because you're not training. It's very simple. Yes. It's a very simple math. If you're training, you're losing. Or I'm yes. not losing. Okay, if you're not losing, you're not training. Because you're supposed to lose every day. And for a new white belt, especially if they've done different sports and they were very good at it, you know, like a wrestler. He was a very good college wrestler. He comes to jiu-jitsu and he taps all the time. Some people, they don't get it. They don't, you know what? I don't need this. I'm just going back to wrestling. Or yeah. some bodybuilders, right? That they have a very good shape, but they can't last like three minutes on the mats. Because it's, yeah. a different, it's a different workout. Some people say, I'm very good. I'm in very good shape. I'm like a, a swimmer, like Michael Phelps. Man, mm -hmm. you won't last four minutes on the mats. There's a different pool right here. That's so right. So the, 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 the biggest like, uh, mistake that they make, it's expecting they're going to be good. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Or like say, let, lots of people say, you know what? I mean, I need to get in shape. And then I'm going to start training jiu-jitsu. Mm. I say, man, you're just losing your time. 
You're just wasting your time because you never get in shape to train Jiu Jitsu. You just come right now how you are and be ready to learn because that's what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's one of the biggest mistakes. It's not they're not ready to learn. Yeah, they so, want to win all the time. Very very well put. I think and that was the biggest mistake I made and still make to this day. Is your and I think to sum up what you said, it's ego. ego you know, yes. I, yes. The, the 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 biggest thing, and this is West West Chatham and I talk about this all the time. The, Jiu-jitsu translates into so many things in life, uh, but especially for us actors, it's like the thing that you're always – that you get so anxious about and worried about, whether it's in an audition or whether it's when you're on set, is what are people going to think? And your ego gets in the way, and jiu-jitsu has helped to throw all that out and say it doesn't matter. I'll never, I'm not going to learn if I don't fail. Uh, and, and so putting yourself in positions to fail, to learn how to work out of those positions, um, is, is one of the biggest things someone can do. And I think the faster that a white belt learns that, the quicker they get all the other concepts. Yeah. Uh, what people don't see it, most of them is like, a. Like for example, I have I have uh, some gold medals, right? I have some important gold medals from worlds, from uh, I have one right here. So I have from worlds, from Pan Ams, from like a, in Brazilian competitions. I have gold medals, and people say, "Man, this guy's good." But what they don't see is how many mats I lost mm. compared to those gold medals. Right? Yeah. It's like you, I bet. How many parts did you lose? Yeah. Right? You play something, maybe I didn't get the part, I didn't get it. So, how many? It was just one that you lost? Have you always played everything that you want to play? Or you got denied a few, but you know what? I'm going to keep moving. I'm not going to give, give, give up. It's, it's the same thing. So, you, you can take that like uh, from your life, from your career to Jiu Jitsu. It's the other way around. The same thing. Yeah. <laughs> We're lucky. You know? You're lucky for being able to do that and bring into Jiu Jitsu the same aspect. You know, you know what? I think it's the same thing as acting. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jiu Jitsu can bring a lot of lessons to your life as well. Yes. <sighs> it's my turn or your turn? Your turn. My turn again. Uh, what was the hardest, challenges to work that you have done in your life? That's from Rebecca Lazzarini. Okay. Hardest challenge work I've ever had to do in my life? Uh, being a father. Um, you know, uh, I, I think... <clears throat> I think any 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 parent out there would say the same thing. It, 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 you when you have a when you when you have a kid, I think you're never you're never ready for it. Uh, there is no perfect time, and it, they seem cute and cuddly and amazing when they're babies, but then they grow up to be teenagers, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they're still awesome, but. The, you know, it, 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 it pushes you to sort of your limits of patience and of love and of um, restraint and to know that you are, you are partially and greatly responsible for putting this life out into the world to for it to be a uh, a contributing member of society uh, and a and hopefully a really good human being um, is a is a is a huge responsibility. So uh, you know I've done a lot of fun stuff in my life, but but th that's definitely being a parent is definitely the hardest work I've ever had to do. Yeah, it's not going to get any easier if it does. It's going to nope. help, okay? <laughs> It never goes away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be a grandfather 
So I can't wait. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah, but see, the you. event is you get to hand them back. Yes. <laughs> right. I can't wait for that. Man, take it. You know, oh, thank you. No, take its time. Just go. Yes. Yes. And yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, ba -ba -ba. How many questions do you have left for me? Because I lost count in here. I have two more questions for you. Two more questions. Okay, let me let me ask you two questions as well. Um, what do you do? No, have you ever had to use jujitsu in any like a self defense situation, like like for example, like a crazy fan, right? Or like a, in a scene, like somebody said, uh, Mike, this scene right here, we gotta do this, and he says, No, what if I do this way and try to use some? Yes. Uh, actually, um, uh, very, so when we were doing, uh, uh, fantasy Island, there's a, um, there's a fight that, that, uh, Austin Stoll and I get into in the middle of a Creek bed. Um, and, uh, the stunt coordinator, we filmed it in New Zealand, we filmed it in Fiji and all the, the stunt crew was from was from uh, New Zealand and I was very, very lucky. Uh, my stunt double Jacob Tamori doubles Tom Hardy as well. Tom's a big, a big jujitsu guy. Uh, so Jake, Jake was big into jujitsu. And so he and I started talking about how we could kind of change the scene a bit. And I had just literally before we'd left to go to Fiji to film, we had just learned uh, Kuru Kuru guard. Um, and so that was fresh on my mind. I was like, well, what if, what if when he goes to get on top of me, I get inside and get the Kuru Kuru guard and flip him over my head and da, da, da. And they're like, yeah, that's great. And so in the, in the, in the scene, that's what we ended up doing. He, he gets on top to choke me and I get the Kuru Kuru guard and flip him up and over my head all in the middle of like a raging Creek. So, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, have I ever use it for self-defense thank god no uh i hope i never do um but uh uh it, it has come in handy for filming it just in in letting for knowing how to do fight scenes it gives you stuff to do it helps right it helps you to understand better like a scene like like you said like a shooting scene like if you have some ideas how to fight this man it's not real this could be better this way yep yes Yes. Um, what is the worst injury you've ever had? A broken rib, 2017. Okay. <laughs> it's very easy to remember because, man, uh, man, it's painful. I had yeah. hurt my ribs before, trained jiu-jitsu, like competing, but this time... I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sneeze. Well, oh man! And the worst thing was because I broke it during the match, and I didn't feel it. So I kept fighting. Then I won the match. When the referee raised my hands, oh, that's when I felt like something something is wrong right here. But when I was walking out, poof! It came, man. Oh, and I went to see a doctor. He says, man, it's broken. Pa pa pa. But you still have two more matches to go. Yeah, because man, I, I I can't do this. I can, of course I can't do this. I'm a warrior. I'm a samurai. I'm a Jedi. I can't do this. You know, I don't need ribs. You know, <laughs> and then it's so mad. <laughs> and he, he said, I'm not gonna put in some ice. I'm gonna do nothing because if it cools down, it's gonna get worse. I said, okay, man. When I got on the mats, when I grab him, I sit down to pull guard because I thought it's better if I play top or bottom with a broken rib. I think I think mm. bottom, right? Oh my God. Man, when I grabbed him, when I was squatting down, Ugh. my ribs crushed. I said, ah! And so I almost let him go and lay down on the ground. He just Ugh. came mounting on me, grabbed my neck, and, boom, and squeezing out my hands was like this, like, ah! It just, just choked me. Ugh. Yeah, so that was my worst. Like I had like, actually I didn't have a lot of like a big serious injuries in Jiu-Jitsu. I had uh, way more injuries playing basketball, like my fingers broke my fingers, twist my knees, my ankles. But jiu-jitsu was my broken rib. That yeah. actually, I, 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 and actually, I think I broke it applying normal platter to someone. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. As I was on top, sitting up like this, the guy was a little, little chubby, heavier than me, like a short guy, but the same weight. So I had to, to crunch this way. That, that's how I think I broke it because I'm watching the matches at uh, the video later. I can't find where it happens. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Mm hmm. Um, my last question to you, right? Yes. Tell me one of the biggest lessons that you learned from jiu-jitsu. <clears throat> I, th I think the, 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 the biggest lesson from jiu-jitsu is what we talked about. Uh, get get comfortable losing. Um, I think it's the greatest the greatest lesson anyone can learn. Uh, you know, there's so many biblical lessons in it. Even just in in uh, if you want to be first, learn to be last. You know, the the if you wanna if you want to learn to win, and, and you have you're only going to get to that point. By finding the areas that you're weak, um, and to your point, I think so many people start jujitsu, uh, and especially like you said, when someone comes to it and they're a really accomplished athlete, and they're used to being very competitive. Uh, I'm very competitive, and I get, I got, I would get angry at myself every time I would, uh, uh, and so instantly right off the bat your first class you're going you're going to get beat big time that's okay and i think the sooner someone learns to accept that the faster they actually they actually progress um i spent i got hurt a lot early on because uh, one of the most one of the worst things in jiu-jitsu you can do is being tense and being you know trying to muscle to muscle everything because you 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 end up hurting yourself because you're you're you know you you when you roll with someone like you who's calm and you're like God, whatever you you said to me one time you're like what whatever you want i'll give it to you you want my sleeve here take my sleeve you want my you you want my pants here take my pants i'll give it to you and so i think uh when you're starting out you know someone goes to grab your 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 you know your 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 jacket your gi and you yank back uh or they go to grab their your your foot and you yank back and you pull away and you get tense, whereas watching you, I would grab your grab your sleeve and you're like, oh, yep, there it is. Because you know that eventually I'm going to give you something that you're just going to put me out with. Uh, but in my little white belt brain, I'm going, ha ha, I've got a sleeve. <laughs> and before I know it, I was, I was, I was, I was choked out. Um, so I, I, had I learned earlier on to just be okay with losing, be okay with losing and lose a lot because that's where you learn. Um, I think that's the greatest lesson I've learned. <laughs> yeah. But I, I remember being a white belt also like, uh, when somebody would grab their lapel when wrap around my leg, I would freak out. I had right. no idea what he's doing. I just want to know this lapel, get out of here, get out of here. But I had no idea what to do. <laughs> but at least, you know, I don't want to let him play his game. So right. I grab him on the breaker, just like man. It's like we, we have no idea what to do. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's amazing. It's amazing part yeah. of the game. Yes. Um, last question. <clears throat> what would be your advice to someone, you know, naturally – as you do jujitsu, uh, you're going to get injured and there's going to be, if you do it long enough, there's, there's, you, it just happens. What is your advice to keep doing jujitsu and stay relatively injury free into ripe old age? So to do this, to do this till I'm a, I'm a, I'm an old man. Uh, what is your advice? I'm going to quote a big friend of mine, Lee. Bruce Lee, 
<laughs> he said, water, my friend, be water. Yes. <laughs> Try to flow, don't fight. That's when people get hurt. If you see, you have to be very smart, or at least try to be smart. But it's smart in a way that you are your first priority. Your body, it's your priority. You have to come back home safe. You don't have to be on the, be at the gym and choke everybody out. That's not your goal. Your goal is come back home safe and had a good workout. So if you go there, if you think, if you put yourself in a position that, oh, I think that's going to hurt, stop right away. Mm. Or tell your partner to stop. Or, or give up a position. If you're moving your arm in a way that you think is going to hurt, because you have to know your body. Like I know things that I can't do anymore because my body hurts. What I do is I try to move it back. Or if I can't move it back, I say, Paro, stop. Good job. You won. What do you mean? I tapped. Why did you tap? It doesn't matter. I tapped. But in my head, yeah. I know because if I had my knee that way, it, it could make it give me a big injury to me. It's not his fault at all. It was yeah. my fault that I put me in that position. So that's why I said, good job, you won. I lost. Let's restart. It's not a big deal. Like 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 we, we talked before, it's about losing. So someone, especially someone older, they have to know their limitations. They have to know, man, I'm not 20 years old. Oh, but I see my partner right here by my side doing 10 push-ups. I can barely do two push-ups. Man, it's okay. He's not going to come back home with you. <laughs> you have to come, <laughs> come back home to your house, yourself. You know how your elbows can handle the, those push-ups. Nobody yeah. else. And today you do two push-ups and guess what, man? Next month you're going to be doing three push-ups. And yeah. four and ten eventually. And you just get better with time. But you have to pace yourself and you have to know your body. You have to be smart. Man, leave that ego off the door, that ego. And give up things and quit things in jiu-jitsu it, it's okay if you quitting it's not quitting if you stopping to uh to make a better plan and move on you stop right here make a better plan and then you move on that's different quitting now you know some people get hurt oh i can't do jiu-jitsu anymore for the rest of my life some people are, are waiting for excuses to stop training, to be lazy at home. Oh, I can't train anymore because I have a hernia disc in my neck. And my doctor said I can never train it, so I'll never walk again. Man, my wife had a, uh, has a very big injury in her neck right now, and she's training. Mm. But like, like that way, you have to be smart. Certain moves, yeah. you can't do it. You have to stop. She gets frustrated. But I say, it's up to you. You want to trade jiu-jitsu or walk in a wheelchair? Oh, jiu -jitsu. Yeah. So if you do jiu-jitsu, do this way, you know? Yeah. That's what I think. <clears throat> uh, did you have any injury uh, in jiu-jitsu or in working? Did you get hurt? Working or jiu-jitsu? Uh, lot, lots of injuries in jiu-jitsu because I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, what have I done? So far, I, ha I dislocated my ankle. Uh, the one that has really got me is I have a stress fracture in my hip. And it keeps – this is where, like you said, listening to your body, uh, I will keep – I keep rolling – even when I feel it start to hurt again, instead of instead of stopping and letting it settle down, and that may that may mean taking a week off, you know, to let it to let it calm down. But I get stubborn, and I keep going, and then before I know it, I'm out for two months uh, with a stress fracture. So, uh, to your point, uh, it's just a you know, just be smart, know your body, and um, know what. It, tap just tap and start again it, you it doesn't it, it doesn't mean anything you know uh yeah i just want to add something else like uh, some people uh know the samurai mentality the samurai mentality which is like uh, man i have two arms to fight if mm. i lose one arm in the battle guess what that's not gonna stop me fighting i'm gonna fight with one arm if I lose two arms, I'm still going to fight. I can use my legs to kick. If I lose yeah. my both legs, I can bite. But I won't yep. stop fighting. So that samurai mentality, it doesn't apply these days anymore. That's right. 
with families and work and jobs and for the life that we want to stay trained forever. That doesn't apply anymore. We have to uh, sit down, analyze our body, relax, and have a plan to back to work, to training. Especially you have to talk to your professor and don't be afraid, don't be shy to say that you have an injury. Say, mm -hmm. professor, man, I hurt my rib. Is there anything that I can do? I don't want to miss classes. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I, I tell my students is, man, come, put your gear on, step on the mats. Just yes. stepping on the mats right there is going to give you such an energy. Yep. Just being there and do whatever you can. If you can, I can just watch. Okay, just watch. It's fine. But come yep. on the mats, you know? Yep. Share some time with your friends. Watch and learn something. Because some people learn a lot just watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And with this... We are done for today, Mike. Right. Okay. So thank you very much, man. It has been like uh, more than an hour already. We chatted here. Of course, I still have more like 20 more questions to ask, but we don't have more time. We have families to go back to, right? Maybe another day we can talk more. I look forward to can see each other on the mats. Yes, I look forward to it, sir. Thank you for having me. And, I, and I'll see you soon. Awesome. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to upload this video right here to YouTube later, okay? So if somebody right. want to watch later, it's going to be there. And this is your uh, your Instagram, right? Real Mike Vogel? Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So if somebody has to follow you, if, if somebody's not following you yet, please right there is Real Mike Vogel. And the video is going to be on YouTube. So guys, thank you very much for you guys that sent some questions that are watching with us. And see you guys next time. Thank you, Professor. Os. Os.